so since we got more snow last night, uh, I thought I would spend some more time in the garage instead of shoveling my driveway, um, which isn't going to happen. So the last video I ended, you saw me paint or coat, whatever, the valve cover and these side co covers, um, like a high heat flat black. And it turned out really good and I was going to run it that way until I put them on the motor and it just looked blah. The rest of the bike has got such a good like sparkle we'll say to it like everything's got a little bit of a shine and the flat black valve covers and side covers as cool as it would be on a bike that was maybe all black or all flat black um it didn't look right on mine so i tried to figure out what could i do to make it still look different but um not like a you know, Chevy orange valve cover, some sort of like an engine paint that way. What I ended up doing is I found it's a, what do they call it? It's like an anodized, it's a spray, like spray paint, like anodized color. It's not actual anodized and it's just made to look like an anodized color. You're supposed to paint it over like a silver or a bare aluminum and it looks sort of anodized. And it's kind of a, a higher heat paint. So I figured I'd give it a shot. And I would use the uh, flat black because it was it it didn't lay like um, glass smooth. It has a little bit of a texture to it. I thought that might work as a pretty good like base primer for putting on some anodized blue color. And going over black, I wasn't sure how it was going to look, but I'm even more excited how this turned out. Uh, my bike isn't actually pure blue and white. Uh, there is blue and white on it, but the factory color has like a purple hue to it. So like at night, the bike looks like it's got a little bit more purple in it. And during the day, it looks like it's blue. So kind of cool. But what happened here, let's see if I can show you quick, is that's a bad, that's a bad angle. I'll get a better angle. So what happened is we actually got our gloss black, our, our gloss back. So and I'll, it'll look pretty good in the bike, but the color turned out pretty crazy. It's like got a bluish purple hue to it. It almost sort of, oh boy, on camera that sure looks blue, blue, but in person there's a, there's a little purplish to that, but it's definitely not a perfect match, but it kind of goes along with the coloring of the bike. And I'm pretty excited about that. So this thing's about ready to go back in though. So now that I got that little, you know, quick update out of the way, uh, I thought I would actually sit down and I got a little bit of time to kill tonight. Not really going to dig into any motor or bike stuff at the moment. It's just no time, but I got time to hang out. We'll just say I'm lazy. So what I thought I would do is a little bit of answering some questions that I've gotten either through Messenger or just actually on comments on some of the videos. And some of this I've covered in older videos, but it's, it's sort of buried in other info. And I know some people, if they're watching just like the most recent stuff, they might not actually know what I'm doing here. Um, cause it's honestly, it's been a while since I've actually had the bike out as a complete running unit and haven't really talked about what it is that I'm, you know, what I'm doing here. So that's what a lot of the questions have been kind of, uh, more or less what the overall setup is. People have been seeing all the tinkering and the little bits here and there. Not really the whole package. But one of the questions I got was just kind of a general overview of what this motor, they're both similar, but this is the fresh one. Um, what's kind of in, in there? What am I using for parts? And I tell everybody that I don't use anything exotic. I run this bike a lot. And to me, it's more important to be able to make passes every week and have fun and enjoy it than it is to get, you know, two or three more horsepower out of some goofy one-off custom thing. So the quick breakdown on what's in this motor is I run, look, I've got a focus issue going on here. Let's try that. So anyway. Uh, I run 03, 04 cases. Uh, I haven't ever found a set of 0102s or I'd run them. Uh, I don't really 
do any of the 05, 06, or 07, 08 stuff. Um, the case has got a little more fragile, not significantly, but a little bit. So I just stick with what I know. Um, the, I run stock bore even. And 05, 06, the bore changed a little bit. Minimal, but it's different. So between the 01 and 04 cases, I can run all of my spare uh, pistons, stock bore pistons, shelf stock. This motor is 13 to one. That's what I said. It's a 13 to one turbo motor. Um, I can go into why I do that in another little breakdown if you want, but um, low compression to me is kind of old school. And it's also a reason behind um, the type of racing I do, the why I go that route. But yeah, I run 0304 cases, the KED, the KED, the KED, the head, you know, it's similar to a KED, but it actually works on a motor. Um, the head is an 0708 1000 head. Um, they're just really the, the better option, the better functioning, flowing. They're just the better head to, to get. But however, looking back, I kind of wish I would have went with a 0506 head because I don't think there's a marginal enough difference performance wise on a stock head on a turbo bike to justify the trouble I have finding 0708 heads compared to 0506 heads. So if I was going to do this again, I'd be doing 0506 heads. And in fact, if I wreck something else here, I might make that switch. Um, not a super big deal. And I'm not 100% even sure what the, the, the spacing changed. I don't think the exhaust is the same. I could be wrong. Um, it's been a while since I've researched a lot of the stuff after I landed on the setup that I have. So some stuff has kind of, you know, gone out of mind because I haven't really needed it. But it's a stock crank. Again, I run like the first generation cranks. And then the cams are actually web cams. And they are where I got it written down here. The grind numbers, if you want to actually know, it's a 45, grind number 45 web on the intake and a 483 grind on the exhaust. And they're both actually intake cam cores, but I don't run a cam position sensor on this, so I don't need to worry about a cam pin. I can run two exhaust cams if I want, if the grind is right. Um, a lot of times, that's the only difference in you can get an intake cam ground with the 45 specs. You can get an exhaust cam ground with the 45 specs or the 483 specs. Um, the difference is that cam pin. The cores are basically the same. And I also run the 0506 throttle bodies. They're a little bigger than the 0304s, and they don't have that goofy injector setup that the 0708 has. It's still eight injectors, but it doesn't have that goofy rail. So the 0506 in, uh, throttle bodies, I only run four inject, another finger here, I run four injectors, not eight, um, 2000 CC, four injectors is plenty for what I'm doing. And it makes the tuning unbelievably easier. Uh, I don't know that there will ever be a reason to run eight injectors. I just, I don't see it, not for what I do. Um, this bike will never make 700 horse. I think that's useless for the racing I do. If, it, you know, if I was running you know, XDA Pro Street type stuff, mint tracks every time, yeah, big power, big everything. Um, but for running every couple nights a week at a local track on weeknight type track prep, um, I, I don't need big power. I need big-ish power, I guess. Um so that's kind of the general breakdown of what's in this thing. Um, the trans is a stock back cut. Um, it's not anything fancy. It's just a stock back cut trans with, I do however run the heavy duty uh, Robinson output shaft. So it takes like a, a bigger, like a ZX-14 front sprocket is what I run. So that's really the only heavy duty part in the trans with just good, um, Micro Blue is the brand bearing I run. Um, a lot of people, you've probably heard of the name Worldwide Ceramics. Um, Micro Blue is just another company that does a similar type deal. They're not ceramic, they're just a treated bearing, and they've been rock solid reliable. It's the only bearings I've ever had in that motor, or a motor even. 
So, yeah, it's like I said, it's 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 nothing extravagant. It's just got good parts where it matters. The uh, the rods I run uh, Carrillo uh, H beams, and uh, the pistons are JE shelf stock stock bore, nothing fancy. Um, that's that's that. I even got a clipboard. Well, official. Um, one of the other questions I got recently, after seeing a lot of the videos I've been doing about um, all the cylinder head work, I'm salvaging this head, is uh, whether or not having a head surfaced. Um, I got mixed feelings on having heads surfaced because one, um, this motorcycle stuff that we do isn't like the car world. Um, there's not a lot of excess meat on these heads to start taking a lot of material off. And if you take too much off, you're actually going to start getting into the exhaust seats. Not the worst. You can nip the top edge of them just a little bit. But I'd like to stay away from that if possible. So I don't really send the heads out to get them surfaced. I'll check them for flatness. And then you can put them on a you know flat plate and double check stuff. Or the easy answer is to just take let me grab one here. These are machinist squares. Um, the easy answer for checking to see if your head is good is just get it cleaned up. Uh, you don't want to be in there with a the freaking die grinder sanding stuff off old head gasket material. But just get the head clean. You just you could scotch bright it if you want. Just take your hand and you know. You don't want to add a bunch of pressure where you're adding grooves in the shit. Get the head clean and just take a machinist square. This is a flat ass edge right here. Just set it across the chambers and take a feeler gauge and go across. Start checking for low spots. Go at an angle, go between the chambers, go across the, the spots between the chambers. Um, and just look for low spots. Short of a major mishap, you're probably not going to find a lot of um, bad cylinder heads. Um, most surfacing is done to um, repair damage. So if the head's never been damaged, odds are real good that it's gonna be pretty flat. And I, um, I got the hiccups. Um, I've kind of come up with my own sort of standard. Uh, it's just from what I've seen. I'll take feeler gauges, go under that straight edge, and I'll start it like a two thou feeler gauge. I don't want to be able to get that tooth out under there, but if it does, it's not the end of the world. You know, we tighten the head down, tooth out is not a terrible amount to correct. Head gasket, you know, there's leeway in there. Um, you start getting upwards of four or five, six thou that you can get under them feeler gauges. Yeah, maybe a skim cut, but again, I, I, I would steer clear. Um, makes you feel better, have it done, but realistically, Checking for flatness, it really probably ain't going to be that bad. And uh, save yourself a little coin and just clean it up yourself and reuse it. Run them. Um, turbo bike. Uh, there's kind of two questions here. One of them is uh, I was asked to kind of cover why I decided to go with turbo after being a nitrous bike for so long. And I've literally been racing for 20 five 27 years at this point and short of like the first couple years everything i've owned has been nitrous for motorcycles so why did i switch to turbos well in my opinion um everybody's got their own opinion it just is more expensive and harder to go fast and race more frequently with nitrous i feel like the motor build the motor itself has to be a little more rowdy, even just on motor. And then you add nitrous to the mix. And not only do you have, you know, a motor tune, you have an ever-changing floating target nitrous tune. And in the world of standalones, it's gotten a little easier to control that type of stuff. And had I had a standalone on this years ago as a nitrous bike, maybe it would still be a nitrous bike. I don't know. But the big thing is that, one, I get tired of chasing around nitrous fills. 
few years back, five years, whatever, um, there was that big nitrous shortage and nobody could get fills. And I, I just decided I was going to run the bike on motor. I didn't care if I sprayed it again, just cause I wasn't going to take three nights a week to chase around different shops to figure out who had nitrous. So that was a big minus to the nitrous. And the other thing is when you run this bike as much as I do, and I'm not, I'm not phrasing it like that, trying to like brag, like that's all I do is race, but I really enjoy running this bike and I make a lot of laps on it and it's fucking fun. That's why I race it as much as I do. Um, now that you go through a lot of nitrous, but to really, really go fast with nitrous, it's just hard on parts. And in the last few years that it was a nitrous bike, I was really pushing the thing and it was fast. It just always seemed to hurt something. And like I said, maybe if I had more data, I could have saved more motors, but I didn't. And it just got expensive. The last year that it was a nitrous bike was three complete motors were trashed. And it just was really wearing on me. And I started just weighing the pros and cons of staying nitrous, budget. Um, nitrous is easy to get. It's, you know, it's a, not a lot of parts, but it's another system on the bike. But nitrous is really relatively easy and cheap to kind of get involved with. The turbo stuff scares people away, mostly just not understanding. And it is expensive to get into initially. But I feel like it pays for itself in the first season. The first season, this was, a, or the first three years, this was a turbo bike. Is this last season was the only time it's hurt something like this major. Um, I've had little mishaps where I've caught problems, you know, not not turbo or nitrous type problems, just mechanical problems. But yeah, there was three seasons on that thing as a turbo motor. But um, I'm gonna try to stop saying but. The uh. The big reasoning behind dragging this out, the big reasoning behind me wanting to go turbo is the simplicity in the tune. When you take a nitrous bike to the track, you're constantly compensating for conditions, atmospheric conditions, because your nitrous, your motor tune might be fine. Leave it alone. Your nitrous tune is just kind of constantly ever changing with conditions. And some people run on the safe side where um, they don't have to make a lot of changes and they can kind of make them passes where the weather and the environment might not fuck with them as much. Those guys probably aren't really, really pushing the envelope either. But nitrous is a lot of work. It's violent and fun and you people are going really fast with it. But I just feel like it's a little more work and a little more inconsistent than what I wanted to deal with. And the thing with the turbo bike is it doesn't care what the weather is. With the turbo I got on this thing, um, it doesn't care if it's 100 degrees out with 200% humidity and you know we're running in the clouds. Um, that turbo makes boost no matter what. And the cool thing is with a turbo bike, I feel, is I go to the track, the first pass, is, it's going to go down. I'm not looking to make a 60-foot hit or a 330 hit to get an air fuel to judge the weather. Um, this bike don't give a shit. Uh, it's going to make a full pass. And I know from that pass, given the atmosphere, weather conditions, um, what I got to work with for that day. And if I need more, I just turn the boost up. Um, the bike don't care if it goes, we'll say, on a perfect weather condition day, say it goes 750 on 18 pounds of boost, which it has. Say we go down there on a real shitty, hot, humid day and that same tune-up in it and it goes 770, which it has. Um, I can just put more boost to it and pick up that difference and make it right back to a 750 bike. And it's not going to care. It's got a target air fuel that it's going to target the whole pass. It doesn't care what air is out there to do it. If that turbo is pumping it into the motor, it's going to add the fuel and it's going to make the power and make the trip. I feel like with nitrous, that's a little more involved to do. Um, guys that are really good at it can do it, but I can do it um, in staging lanes between rounds. I mean, it don't get much easier than that. 
especially, especially, I'm not trying to be a salesman for the standalones, but just get one. So I'm being a salesman, just, man, your life's going to be easier. But like I said, I, I do miss how violent the nitrous was. That was a lot of fun, like the hit. But with a little bit of tweaking, this thing leaves harder than the nitrous bike ever did. So I more or less regret every dollar and every pass spent on nitrous. And I'm making more passes and having more fun and going faster than I've ever gone as a turbo bike compared to the nitrous setup. So to me, that was a kind of a no-brainer. Um, it took me a year to make the switch. I started collecting parts. Didn't really know what I was doing. Kind of figured the stuff out as I went. Nothing was really going right. Started talking to some really smart people. It started wanting to help me get the right stuff. And now this thing's pretty dialed. The turbo itself is a... The brand is AGP. And it's a really nice piece. They are, their tech and service is spot on. Like they're right there. But the big thing is, is they're very budget friendly. It's a dual ball bearing billet wheel, 57 millimeter. And it's been on there for three years. And I don't have any issues with it. And I could, <laughs> a lot of people like to give me shit, you know, behind my back, of course, uh, that, that I built a pro street bike. One, they don't know what pro street is. Two, they don't know anything about what Pro Street is. And three, I could, they would never understand why this bike's not even Pro Street legal. Um, it's just over their pay grade, just over there. So, story for another day. It's not a Pro Street bike. I do love Pro Street bikes. It's Pro Street inspired. It's not Pro Street legal, and it won't be raced in Pro Street. It's my street to go as fast as I can make it go. That's all I care about. So take all those arguments about where I race and what I race and put them in the trash. I don't care. Um, the turbo that's on it is, like I just said, it's a 57 millimeter. Pro Street Legal is 62. I don't need that. Uh, not for our local track. But the 57 millimeter on this motor is why I, well, and the compression that I run is basically why I have boost on tap and it makes power instantly. Um, I can put this thing on the two-step, it'll make 15 pounds in 1.3 seconds. And that's pretty decent. Um, I could go to a 62 millimeter turbo and have a Pro Street turbo on it. Again, I don't need it. Um, it's a little more to spool. Nah, I shouldn't even say that. The technology and the wheels and stuff, it really, it spooled just as fast. Um, but this turbo itself is capable of making more boost than I'll ever run. So why do I need one that makes 20 more pounds of boost than what that'll make? It, you're just getting into an area I don't need. So the whole package itself is a little bit smaller. But the exhaust housing is, if you don't understand the AR numbers on a turbo, it's in... Simple terms, it's just how much exhaust it'll flow. And I run a 0.82 AR because that's a little bit, you know, that's not huge, but it's a little bit bigger than what you would put on probably a street bike or a street ridden bike. So the 1000 motors compared to like a Busa or something. And again, I'm not talking about full high dollar like pro street builds. I'm just talking about the general working man's type builds. Um, the 1000 motors, they rev pretty freaking high. So you need an exhaust housing that can actually flow that amount of exhaust. Even though you're trying to you're trying to spool a turbo, you have to be able to let the motor rev and breathe. And if the exhaust housing is too restrictive, it's going to basically choke the motor off and you're just not going to make the power that the turbo can support, I guess. You're going to have all this boost going into a motor that can't get it out. You're just going to end up with high boost numbers and no power and everything's going to get hot, and you're going to have ex excessive exhaust back pressure, which isn't great. It's just a whole, you know, domino effect. So if I was going to... I don't want to get into too much just dishing out advice because my brain works all different ways. If I was going to give anybody any advice on picking out a turbo, um, I would say error to the higher side on an AR number because you can 
outgrow a turbo with a small AR a whole lot faster than, uh, yeah, you'll outgrow that in a hurry compared to um, a higher AR, which you might not maximize, but it won't limit you. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts on, you know, the turbo sizing and why I went with what I went with. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the general breakdown on some of the most recent questions I've got on the channel, which I dig. I love when people ask questions because I want to be able to break this down into like, you know, working man level knowledge and let, you know, let people know that, um, it's no real science to this. It's just years of experience and just doing it. And, uh, I tell everybody that fast breeds fast. Um, if I'm not helping you guys when I can, how I can to try to get faster and get you in the garage and get you doing stuff yourself, then the sport of motorcycle drag racing in general suffers. Cause then you just end up with like our local scene, you end up with 30 bikes with hand clutches and swing arms that they call builds that race every weekend, the same people on the same ETs they've been going for the last 10 years. Everything goes stagnant. Um, it's not about evolving. We don't all need to be on top fuel bikes at this point, but I want to see people out and making stuff like get in the garage, build your bike, go as fast as you can go. If you happen to fit into a class somewhere that you can race, awesome. If not, just go out and test, build some shit, um, trial and error, wreck something, fix it, go faster again. But, um, yeah, so hopefully that answers some questions. If you have anybody out there has any other questions on how or why I do certain things. Creepy ass noises. Um, yeah, but how or why I do certain things or why the bike is the way it is. Um, just ask, I'll let you know. Um, it's no secret the bike, it's not the fastest in the world, but it rips pretty freaking good and it works. Like I've built this in this garage and it works. So people can battle with me about what I'm doing. Uh, how else do I explain what I'm doing works? And again, it's not about me being a know-it-all. It's me wanting to get people out there and do this. And if I have to spill the beans to get people motivated to do it, that's what I'll do. And if I want to call bullshit on bullshit, I'll do it too. So ask away or flame me, Meh, I don't care. But hopefully you need to get out in the garage and go build something. Mm -hmm.